we're no, recording. No, it's going. It's going. Well, we're having you. a rough start this morning, people. Yeah, no <laughs> kidding. Good morning. Morning, everybody. We both sleep slept later than we wanted to. Well, it's to. really dark and dreary and ugh, yeah. outside. Yeah. So, yeah. And plus, slept in. it Didn't takes wake me up. a good three weeks after um, moving the clocks ahead in spring oh. to get back into routines. You know what? I, it doesn't really bother me. No? No. Oh. No, no alternate effects from that. Okay. So, yeah. yeah it does me. Maybe in fall, I guess I, I might have a problem because I lose that sleep. But in, no, in that you gain it in the fall. No, because at eight it? o'clock in the morning, it, the clock says seven. So spring you, ahead. You oh lose yeah, I lose it, it in, in the spring. spring. Okay, well then, then maybe I did have a negative effect. I don't know. Yeah, it always does for me every year. Oh boy. So at so, any rate, it's a gloomy, yeah. rainy Saturday morning, yes. and I did not wake up. But I will say that I had. Two, two nights this week where mm -hmm. when I got up um, to go to the bathroom and then went back to bed. It's my usual four o'clock thing. Yeah. And all of us, I just was wide awake. Oh. Staring at the ceiling. Mine would not shut mm -hmm. off. It was terrible. So I did that twice this week. Uh -huh. So, yeah, that's why I'm... Tired. Okay. And so last night, I went to bed normal time, maybe a little earlier, mm -hmm. um, and then um, slept solid. I must have been tired. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. So, oh well. So, yeah. So have you been knitting this week? Oh, have I been knitting? Okay. <laughs> Come on, really? All <laughs> oh, right. What a segue that was. Okay, have I been knitting? All right. I cast on a shirt. I didn't bring that along. Oops. It's a top-down raglan knit out of the, the Zooey, um, Juniper Moon Farms, and it is just a summer t-shirt, and I am, I think, maybe 15 rows away from the sleeve divide. Okay. So, it's coming along. Mm -hmm. um, Zooey is nice to knit, um, except that you have to not have a pointy needle. Mm -hmm. um, because it splits pretty bad, mm -hmm. because it's the way it twists the cotton and the linen around. Yeah. And it has this kind of a thick and thin thing going. Yeah. And well, not that, dramatic thick and thin. That would be slippery, too, so you'd probably be better off on wood needles. I am using wood, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and those aren't usually as pointy then. Right, So and so it works out yeah. quite well. Um, I'm very happy with the way it's knitting up. Good. Um, it will be, and, and it will be a t-shirt that, unfortunately, um, the way I washed and blocked my, my swatch, um, I literally threw it in the wash with the wash, mm -hmm. literally threw it in the dryer with the wash that went in the dryer, just threw it in the load. Mm -hmm. But then it came out and it was wrinkly. Oh, okay. So it needed a little bit of steam. Okay. To, to lay flat. And so that uh -huh. is how I'm planning on washing this thing. And I'll just have okay. to get over the fact that I have to open my, my ironing board. To steam it? You yeah. Open it? Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, I don't, I could try laying it flat and see what happens. Mm -hmm. But um, we'll see. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, if it were me, this is what I would do. I would wash it and then dry it for just 10 minutes or so, uh -huh. or maybe 15, and then smooth it flat on a surface. Well, that's an idea. finish drying. That's what I would do. Because that usually stops any shrinking, too. But sometimes with cotton, you want a little bit of shrinking going yeah, on. Yeah, you want it to, you know, and, and the with, with the drying, I mean, that that fabric just bloomed lovely. Mm -hmm. It yeah, really was. Yeah, your swatch you brought in last week was gorgeous. It was, you know, I just love it. I think we showed it. it on here. Did we show the swatch? The swatch? I think so. It's not in my bag. Must be in Yeah, I think we did. So, so yeah. yeah, so I did that. Okay. And I did three hats. Oh, you're up to, oh yeah, I remember all three. This one, I rated the cl the clearance baskets, and this is this call stuff called Colorino, and it is a one it's a bulky weight, hundred percent wool uh, from Italy, and oh my God, I didn't expect this. It's gorgeous. I love it. My There's husband, still some left in clearance. Um, 
both colors you have, plus there's a fall kind of rusty yeah. color left too. Yeah, and then this is the other color. Um, and this this hat's smaller. I blocked this one, um, and it's a mm -hmm. man size hat. It's big. And then this one is the, the, the medium. And I used Joanne's broken rib pattern. Just basic hat. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I literally knit them in a day. Okay. You know, easy, quick. Ooh, something fell. I don't know what that mm. was. I don't know. Spooks. I don't know. Mm. I don't know if it was in here or out in the back hall either. No, it sounded like it was like right over there. Oh, it's probably more clearance. I got clearance. No, it's your everywhere. purse. Oh, your purse is yeah. on the floor. That thing is not balanced right to sit flat. You need to clean it out. No, the bottom's too rounded. I don't have that much in there. Oh. You know it. It's a big purse, like this big, and this stuff. Yeah, okay. Up about it's here. that old lady purse with whole oh, gang. Carry it. Well, I always want to look for purses with two outside pockets, <laughs> and sometimes you only get them if they're big. <laughs> okay, so this is all I carry. <laughs> Ta -da. That's the size of my wallet. <laughs> it is a wallet. That's all I carry. Not carrying crap. I decided. When did I decide that? Oh, I don't know maybe about a year and a half ago, mm -hmm. that I was gonna switch to these wristlets mm -hmm. so that I could throw that in my bigger purse mm -hmm. and then I would have that for like short trips kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't use my big purse anymore. <laughs> uh, yeah. I have a really nice couple of them uh, that I really love, uh -huh. and but I see no need to carry a big purse. I will use a big purse when I'm traveling. Mm -hmm. I need a big purse. And then, all right, so hat number three. Okay. This one is called SIP, S-I-P. It's knit in a fingering weight yarn. It was two mini skeins, actually. Um, it's designed by Stephanie Lotvin, and it is probably the easiest color work pattern ever. There is no catching floats, none at all. You get some good practice with this lace stitch, which is, I think, um, kind of tricky in color work because that's if you're gonna get something pulling tight that's where it's gonna pull tight mm -hmm. and so it turned out really nice and it this is leading men um, I had a couple mini skeins that I did okay and uh, but any you know leftovers mini skeins I, I mean I could see myself doing more of these I have a plan you want to do a class for that beginning color work is that a good beginning color work oh yeah this would be a great beginning color work okay okay so, I'm going to write myself a note. Mm -hmm. I would teach you how to do color work with this. Okay. Um, and then what we'll do with this one, though, we'll have them cast on the, the ribbing. Ribbing before And get class. up to the ribbing before class. It'll be like homework. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then um, this is done in fingering weight. I'm going to revise the pattern. Mm -hmm. I want to do it in a heavier weight because I think doing color mm -hmm. work in a heavier weight first time through might be easier, and mm -hmm. I had I bought that um, purple and um, cream out of the clearance basket. Oh yeah, that was an Aaron weight. I was gonna knit yeah. this. I was gonna knit this in the small size, and mm -hmm. I may have to make some modifications to make it the right size hat. Mm -hmm. You know, but I will modify the pattern but for I a class. For a class, though, it might be nice to do the two minis. Then that's not a huge investment for somebody either. Well, that's true too. Okay, so you get the option. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, but I, I will, and I do my color work two-handed. So you got to be mm -hmm. able to knit one direction, um, and I will teach you how to knit it two-handed. Okay. Okay. You want to leave that here, or do you need to take it with you? I'll leave it here. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's fine. I, I was gonna, I it's going to my... fit on my head, though. I don't no. want to put it on the head. It'll stretch you No, out. it'll stretch out. You can't put it on the head because this is kid size. Mm -hmm. I kind of screwed up on that. I was going to knit the... And I cast on the wrong number. I cast uh -huh. on the kid size number. How dumb was that? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So it is now kid size. Okay. But, um, yeah. But I, I will definitely do that. Okay. Okay. And then... Oh, my gosh. I've been having fun. Some of you who would be watching on Facebook might have seen this, but um, I'm knitting eggs. So I'll tell you the whole story. Arnie and Carlos always do these Christmas ornaments, Christmas balls. And they're, you know, two color, um, color work. Sometimes there's three colors in. And I like them. 
and I thought it would be fun to do a tree in Christmas balls. So I bought their book, even though they did a knit along last December with a ball a day. Now I, um, they have a book, there's 55 different Christmas motifs, ornaments in this book. And so I bought this book and I love this book and I'm gonna knit those balls yet. But then I'm watching the Arnie and Carlos podcast and they talk about their spring knit along and they turned their balls into eggs. So I am, let's see, which was number one? Oh, I didn't bring number one. You with showed me. it last week, I the did. chick. Yeah, the chick was last week. I didn't bring last week's. I brought this week's. And there's one missing here because it's not dry. Well, no, it's not blocked. And that one has to be blocked. Some of these I did not block or don't feel like I have to block. Okay, so this one, it's called Spring Flood. I just love the wave on it. Okay, it's called Spring Flood. This one I did not block because the color work wasn't all that big of both. It wasn't pulling in, okay? But then something like this one, I definitely did because you gotta make sure your color work is <coughs> um, like nice. So that's those two. The one is, yeah, this one is Spring Flood and this one's Melting Ice. Oh, they have really cute names for them. Mm -hmm. um, this one, they laughed. They, they figured it's a Swedish flag, and they don't know why they're doing the Swedish flag. <laughs> but actually, uh. this one, this checkerboard, it's kind of a, a very common uh, Norwegian motif in their okay. color, in a cut like a Norwegian colorwork sweater. Um, um, let's see. I don't remember what these other three are called. There's this one. Um, and the other thing I did with these, yeah, I brought six. I'm doing an egg a day. So, and then this this one was easy. This one I didn't bother blocking either because it's just stripes. Are you using any certain yarn or just scraps you have laying around? This is, um, it's called Smart Garn by, I actually bought it here umpteen years ago. Okay. At, you know, when, at Old Shop. It's called Smart Garn and it is a wonderful DK. They have two versions, um, Sadness, Sand Ness, S A N D N E S. It's a Norwegian yarn. Okay. Um, and it is, I've knit sweaters out of it. Mm -hmm. um, now, th this is the DK, mm -hmm. and I, I know they make it in other versions and other weights, but mm -hmm. I like the DK the best be for color work. Okay. Because the, the definition is great. This is the superwash version. The, uh, the one that's non superwash is called Pure Gint. And okay. that might be it might be a little bit more what I call Norwegian itchy woolly. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I, I have never used that, but I bought my first skeins of uh, this here, and I got turned on to it because when you want to have good definition in a kind of very traditional yarn, mm -hmm. this stuff is awesome. And yeah. I, I mean, I love knitting with this for mm -hmm. these these ornaments. Um, I knit. Cora's narwhal sweater that I did oh, earlier okay. this year, that's mm -hmm. knit out of it. Um, she finds the sweater a little too itchy, but then she's oh. got very delicate skin and winds because Just let's face it. Just wear a t-shirt underneath. That's what I do. You know, I, uh, you know how hard it is to find like what a, a typical little girl's undershirt that we wore as kids? We always had to have an undershirt on? Yeah, you have to go to the boys department nowadays and get the t-shirts. You can find them called camis. Oh, okay. <laughs> And they're ungodly yeah. expensive. Yeah. But yeah, I do buy them for her, actually. Okay. And the reason I buy them, and, and, and oddly enough, and I say, and I'll tell her, like, do you want to put a tank on today? Uh -huh. Underneath whatever, like in winter. And she says, oh, yes, definitely. That takes care of all the itchies on my skin. Okay. She has eczema. And oh. it just, it, she had, I don't even know. It's not like, you know, patches of scaly skin or anything uh -huh. like that. Little, little bumps. Little okay. bumps all the time. Yeah. And it sometimes, you know, like if her skin gets dry, she itches. Okay. And I, I, she's got very sensitive skin. Uh -huh. And so um, I buy these 100% cotton tanks in the in the girls' department out of Kohl's. They're ungodly expensive. I think you pay like 12 bucks for two tanks for crying out loud, you know? Mm -hmm. But I buy those for her because then anything she wears, whether it's an itchy, um, Norwegian wool sweater, little mm. bugger, complaining about Norwegian wool for crying out loud. Mm -hmm. Anyways, um, and I put those on her, and she has an itch. 
So, and she's a okay. grumble. And Good. she's got that extra layer warm, so. Yeah. Yep, that's Anyways, good. so these, this is a dozen of my, no, this is a half dozen of my dozen eggs. And I've been knitting an egg a day. And mm -hmm. I have one, let's see. Well, this one I haven't posted yet. This one okay. I, I, I stuffed well, yesterday. Yeah, I stuffed it yesterday. And um, so I haven't posted this one. And then I have mm -hmm. number 10 on the needles needing blocking. Mm -hmm. And I'll knit 11 today and 12 tomorrow. And it's only a dozen. Mm -hmm. What has been fascinating is they, with this knit along, they do this like 20 to 30 minute um, podcast. Mm -hmm. And they have been really purposeful in their chat about teaching how in Norway they celebrate Easter. Because mm -hmm. the snow isn't going to melt there until May, yeah. mid-May. Yeah. So Easter is a holiday that is spent not thinking spring like we typically do. Well, our mm -hmm. snow's gone now, you know. Well, we might see a little flake or two yet, of course. Yeah. It's yeah. not April yet. And but the dirty snowbanks. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> grocery store parking lots. <laughs> well, you know what? I was at, I went to a grocery store earlier this week. There's no pile. Oh, I think they I seen removed something it. something yesterday where there was this whole long line. It looked like little mountains, and they were gray, dark gray. Oh, yeah, it's nasty. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. nasty. But anyways, so I know they, what the typical Norwegian will go to their cabin yeah. in the woods and commune with nature, and it's family time, and it's mm -hmm. unplugged time. And like, you know, they, they take games, mm -hmm. they do books, they play, do puzzles, you know, mm -hmm. um, they ski, <laughs> you know, but it's all, and, and this was interesting because he was giving some t statistics. Now we talk about the cabin up North. I don't have a cabin up North. No, I never, never had a cabin up North, but, um, I would go camping in a state park up North, you know, but, um, I don't have a cabin anyways. In Norway, you fi they fig he said, let's see, now, Carlos was saying that there, the population is around 5 million. And if you think a typical family of four, okay, so you're a little better than a million families, okay, mm -hmm. is what he was saying. And in the mountains of Norway, there are almost 400,000 cabins that people go to, like in mm -hmm. your family. And they're, they're, some of them are very rustic. Some of them, you know, most of them are rustic. Um, some of them have, um, are, are a Taj Mahal, but he said that the vast majority are rustic and it's just a time to unwind. And this isn't part of their regular, how should I say their required five weeks of vacation, oh, you know, yeah. stuff. This is, you know, this is a holiday and so, this weekend is travel time, he says. <laughs> Carlos was saying, we're not going anywhere because the roads will be awful. <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, everybody's driving up north. And so, um, I've been learning so much yeah. listening to this podcast. And I'm having a blast. So, Good. Good. I'll have the whole dozen done by Sunday. Okay. So, I think maybe when I podcast next week, I'll bring my Easter basket in with my whole dozen eggs. And okay, so, there you, you go. Know, That'll look cute. Yeah. yeah. So I'm I'm having fun, and it was funny. Cora Cora came home last night, and she says uh, she I had all the eggs out on the table in mm -hmm. this on this plate that I'm putting them on in the house, and she says, "Oh my gosh, Grandma, we got a lot more eggs." <laughs> well, because she saw three that were finished last uh -huh. weekend, yeah, you know, yeah. and now I've got nine. <laughs> yep, sure. She thought that was funny. She Anyways, was cute. yeah, so. Yep. I, I, I like, I'm, I'm really into this knitting things for my house kick right mm -hmm. now, so. Oh, well. Well, I still am not knitting. Yeah. I do a little bit of crochet here and there, not getting anything done, because, I mean, it's a little. But it's with those Addy hooks. Oh, and it's not a good segue. Oh, I yeah. I got a whole bunch of them in. I ordered a whole bunch of every size from D to L. So, oh, this was a bad choice to pick as a sample. Maybe I'll turn it this way. You can see it. It is this big, thick, ergonomic. That's, the brown part is kind of rubberized. It's a really good handle for somebody that has trouble 
um, with their hands, which I'm having right now. And so I can seem to use this because you don't need such a tight grip like you hang on to your knitting needles. So, um, so I've been doing a little bit of crochet, just still working on that market bag I had last week. Um, but then I've been playing a lot with paper piecing. This is my sample. You can see I fussy cut it so that the design is the same in every diamond. You can see that so that it's a kaleidoscope effect. And fussy cut it. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm going to put together a little video on how to make uh, one of these, I think. So watch for that in coming weeks. But let me, i got to finish this one first. So um, I'm only going to make it this big. It's going to be a mug rug. So my next step is I have to take the papers out. I made this with glue stick. I used just an Elmer's because I ordered the sew line, but I didn't get it in yet. And it did the Elmer's school glue did get kind of thick at the end because I was trying to work from the edge, but, you know, as that wears down. But anyway, so I just got to pop the papers out because this is cardstock paper. Um, and then I'll sew it into a big hexagon. I think I might sew this one, like encase it, just sew around the edges and have a slit in the back, turn it right side out, and then put a piece of quilt batting inside. Mm -hmm. I might just do that. And I might just, I don't know if I really need to quilt it or maybe just tack it down in the center. Probably just, I'll just tack it down. But I'll have that finished for you hopefully next week. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll plan on doing a tutorial. And I think if somebody wants to get into pa paper piecing, I might put together a little kit with two fat quarters and enough papers to make this. And I'm gonna do another one that's with hexes. And I'll make that little kit and um, you can watch the video and make your own if you wanna learn, you know, very basic paper piecing. So yeah, that's that and that's, that's the back. Wow. And I guess these papers are just supposed to pop out. Let's see, we'll try it here. We'll try it here first, folks. Peel this back. Now, if I didn't sew through them, they'll pop out, right? Because that glue is just a temporary glue. I think um, before I take them all out, though, I am I think I sewed through them a little bit. I'm going to iron it and starch it before I do that. Oh. Well... Maybe they don't pop out that easy. Oh, at least just that one. Yeah. Like I said, the glue started getting thick at the end. So, oh yeah, here. It all came out. So, and we can tuck it all back in. I'm going to iron and press it, though, before I take the rest out. Looks pretty so good I and guess, pressed to me. Yeah. Yeah, everything can be perfect. I mean, it's not perfect because I didn't cut perfect, but... That design, you know, it looks pretty good, like kaleidoscope mm -hmm. going around. So it was fun. It was a lot of fun. So what inspired you to do that? Um, a video, a podcast. Somebody talked about it. So I went and I watched the craftsy class on English paper piecing. Oh, I did see that. And that that got me going. So then I watched the Tula Pink three part series on YouTube. Okay. On how to paper piece, and then I'm totally into it now now i want it okay now it still does bother my hands a little bit but i think as long as i keep it to moderation you know maybe only an hour a day mm -hmm. if i keep doing different activities all day i think i'll be okay i think the hand probably got worse because of doing the same thing all day could be so yeah so this this is my new my new hobby. <laughs> like we need new hobbies. Yep. <laughs> so that's the only thing I have to show for that. So I've so instead of knitting, mm -hmm. I'm shopping. Yes, yeah, she is. I I have like five more orders coming in. I don't know. 
I've been naughty. The first thing I want to show you is the Sueno Tweed. This came in, um, it's on the website. It's a brand new yarn for Haiku. Um, they've had Sueno for years and it's a wonderful yeah. sweater yarn. It's I DK have, weight. I have some at home. I love Sueno. Yes, it also makes a very good wrap. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know, I haven't used it for hats. Would it be too slippery? What is it? Probably not. This one is 69 wool, 16 bamboo, and 15% Donegal well, that's viscose, the, the, yeah, which that's is the, the nubs. Um, so I don't know. It might be a little slippery for a hat. Maybe. But it makes a wonderful wrap and a wonderful sweater. Mm -hmm. So um, I have, there's nine colors all together, right? Yeah. So that is the Flying Fuchsia Comfortable Cream. Oh, look at Glorious Gold. Oh, I forgot this one. Grandiose Gray. Mm. Peaceful Purple. Soothing Silver, and Breathe Blue. Oh, is that only seven colors? That would be seven. Yeah, that's seven colors. I'm sorry, I thought it was nine. Because I bought every color, a couple bags of each color. Okay, but here's what you need to see. I laid it out on the table here as you say the ingot to me. Uh-huh. The stripes, pink stripes. All right. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't necessarily do a color work sweater in a tweed. You could. I mean, the right pattern. I think oh, I've sure. seen them. Yep. Um, yep. But what is amazing about this is that the slubs, the little, you know, flex in here, they're all the same on all the different colors. So yeah. what I'm mm -hmm. telling you is that if you striped this, okay, the purple and the gold striped, or did the purple and the cream striped, okay? Mm -hmm. The slubs are the same color, so they match. Yeah, it'll and make this them would all make it would make all of them go together. Mm -hmm. You know, and you so you want to hold them up in a big bunch. Uh, I don't know if I can. You'll you see can it. do it. Yeah, if I turn this way, I gotta turn them so that the yarn labels are all on the other end. They all go together, okay? And this would be a great project for someone who wanted to stripe something. You know, and mm -hmm. I, I kept looking at this as you had to lean over there, and I was thinking what patterns would be in my uh, in my queue that I'd called for stripes, or mm -hmm. even, you know, um, I don't want to say a fade, but yeah, yeah, kind of a fade. There is this um, V-back tee out there that calls for stripes, mm -hmm. and, I, and it's a DK way. And I'm thinking, oh my God, that'd be so cool. These colors are so fresh and yeah. bright and summery. And oh man, this could be mm -hmm. a fun thing to play with. So yeah. something to think about. If you like playing with color, that's definitely a play with color kind of deal. Mm -hmm. So I love this stuff. I, mm. get, I got a few um, Addy Flexi Flips also. Um, this one's bamboo size one. And I got a, the regular steel one, or yeah, steel size one also for socks. Now I bought these because I wanted to try them for socks because so many people are talking about their Haya Haya flyers. And I said, well, Addie's had them forever. Why don't I try the Addie ones? But now I can't knit. So I'm just gonna put them out on the shelf. If anybody buys them and then I can knit, I can always order more. Yeah, you know where they come from. Yep. So. I have flexi flips. And I've used them on sleeves. Oh, okay. Or like a sleeve cap when you're coming down, you know, and mm -hmm. doing the like short row thing or something like that on that kind of sleeve. Mm -hmm. I find that that having that short needle mm -hmm. kind of makes that over the shoulder kind of curve mm -hmm. um, really nice, and it's not so tight. Okay. So, see, I originally bought them for a hat. And I bought several sets, you know, f and put them out for hats. And then I just took one set and put them out for everybody to try. 
And the one thing I, I saw is stitches falling off the end. I think I had to have too many stitches a hat on. You have to be too careful. Too big for these, especially because that was the steel ones, mm -hmm. and they're very mm -hmm. slippery. So I think a hat was too big. So that's why I decided to give them another try, mm -hmm. and to try them for socks, something small and compact that'll basically stay right in the middle there. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah. So if and when I can ever knit again, I am going to try to make socks with these. But if you want to buy them first, they're going to be on the website. Well, the bamboo are on the website. The other ones will get there today or tomorrow. Mm. What you got there? I got some notions that I just restocked. Needles, cable needles, chibi needles. Just, I love chibi just needles. Just notions. Um, oh, here, more cable needles in the wood. These are... Oh, really? Yeah, Brittany Birch. They're like the Brittany needles, but they're um, just little cable needles. Oh, I gotta take some of those home with me today. Okay. Because I was, I want, I, I had my my t-shirt that I'm doing. Uh huh. I want my wood needles to continue with that. Oh, okay. And the, it has cables running down the sides. Well, look at that. Uh, can you see it? Yeah. Um, I do. There's see how the center is lower, and then right about here it thickens up so it'll keep your cable stitches in the middle yeah so yeah I was thinking just the other day uh-huh um I have to take so I, I I said I was thinking I do not have any wood cable needles mm, well now you now you will I have to go get some okay and then I got a couple of sets of the mindful needles I got the Believe set, which is the small half just. Yep. And the Gratitude is the complete set, 2 to 17. So it comes in a little pouch, and this, this is what you get inside. Yeah, I, I two bought a set. 2 to 8? Is mm. that, or two, yeah, I think it's 2 to two 8. 2 to 8. Um, a bunch of cables. Yep. A bunch of um, stitch markers. Um, yeah, you know, the screws to tighten them up. The end stoppers. With, and yeah. Uh, it's actually a oh, really good two deal. Two and a half to eight. Yeah, that's what it was. Yep. And, uh, yeah, four end caps, two cord keys, one cord connector, one needle gauge, two darning needles, ten stitch markers, ten split stitch markers, thirty round stitch markers... Yeah, okay, I wasn't two, real thrilled with the stitch markers, but whatever. Swivel, I mean, four cords. Two are swivel, two are fixed. Yeah. Now, this is to make 24, 32... Length needles four, only. Yeah. Yeah, you only have the two lengths. Right, and you cannot make 16-inch needles with the 5-inch no. sets. People have been asking me that lately no, I a try. lot. And it's because the needles are too long to make it go around like this. Right. Um, you, if you want to make a 16 inch co uh, set, you have to buy the four inch tips. Right, and I think mine are the five inch too. Mostly people buy five inch tips. It's a little bit more comfortable on your hand because this sometimes is less than four inches when you're grabbing on. Mm -hmm. And so most people buy the five inch, but I'm just warning you, if you want it for a 16 inch needle, you have to um, buy the four inch. You can't make this, a, a 60, but what you can do is buy the 20 inch cable uh -huh. and do a 20 inch. Yes. You can do the 20 inch. The 20 inch works. And mm -hmm. I found that the 20 inch will work for a hat. Okay, um, for an adult hat. Yeah. Because kids hats are usually about 19 inches. Right. So you don't want it for that, it would stretch it out. Um, but. I don't didn't I didn't buy them with the intent of doing hats with them, but I did try the cable. Mm -hmm. um, I I bought them because well they're pretty. Mm -hmm. Who I mean let's face it what is a knitter who has uh, a bunch of boxes of needles at home do but buy mm -hmm. more needles what the hell yep and so. the mindful set as I said goes from two to seventeen and um, it's got the big round case. Yeah, I mean, um, I'm sure it's a beautiful set. It has set. all the same stuff, but it has cords are 24, 32, and 40, both 
the swivel and the fix. So you got six cords, six end caps. So, so it's just a little bit bigger quantities. Right. So I have both these sets. And it says when you buy the whole set, you save 20% over buying everything individually. I believe, I mean, I saw, I felt that the set in general was a good value. Uh huh. Um, they, I will say a couple of things about it. The tips are extremely pointy. They are a lace tip. Mm -hmm. So um, keep that in mind when you're yeah. working with it. A lace tip, definitely. Um, the other thing is that they are not real slippery, which, it wasn't annoying, okay? Mm -hmm. But I just noticed they weren't as slick. As and, Addy yeah. turbos. Yeah, you know. as my turbos, okay? Whatever. Yeah, but the Addies, you know, they're the slickest around. So. And that's what you buy an Addy for. Yeah. I mean, let's face it, don't buy an Addy because they're good needles. You buy an Addy because, damn, they're fast. Mm -hmm. You know? Yep. And and uh, so uh, I, I think these mindfulness are very, very nice needles. Mm -hmm. And the price point's good. Yeah. I mean, they, you know, they're not crazy expensive. If you want a good yeah. set of interchangeables, that is definitely a place to start. Because, you know, for the same price on an Addy, you're only getting sizes 4 to 11. Well, the turbos go 4 to 13, I think. But the... 15. 4 to 15. Some of, the, like that. some of the sets only go 4 to 11. Yeah, the lace tips. The lace tips, yeah. They only go 4 to 11 in Addy. So here, you're getting 2 to 17, so you get a lot more needles here. Yeah. And for the same price. I, I think Addies are even Addies went about 200. 160. No, they're a lot oh, more Oh, they went now. up? Well, I've I think had they're mine around for years. 200. I've had mine for years, so I don't yeah, know. Yeah, <laughs> they're around 200. This is 189. But, you know, it, it's interesting. I I have multiple sets. Mm -hmm. um, different, I, I have Haya Haya's. I have now. I bought these mindful ones, um, and of course, I, I my my tried and true Addies. But I also have a whole slew of my fixed circulars. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you know, sometimes it, it's just like a mechanic. It's really just like a mechanic. Mm -hmm. You got to have the right tool for the job. You yep. know. Yep. I mean, okay, you can probably count on one hand the number of times you've seen me knit with a wood needle, but here I am, doing this T-shirt. Mm -hmm. And I've dragged out my wood needles. Mm -hmm. You know, it just is what it is. Having the right tool for the right thing makes sense. Sure. Um, and that's why I have multiple sets. Um, my Haya Haya's, first, oddly enough, my Haya Haya's are the four-inch tips. Because the way that join works on my Haya Haya's, I can use a four-inch tip, which gave me the pointy tip mm -hmm. for a hat. And that's why I bought those. Okay. Okay. Whatever. That would, seems seems rather mm -hmm. frivolous when you think about it. What you know? What else does a knitter spend mm -hmm. her money on except expensive yarn and expensive needles? I get mm -hmm. it. But um, you know, this mindful collection. I will tell you, I was impressed with um, because I, I really liked knitting with them. I mean, I just tried them a little bit. I bought mm -hmm. them last week. Whatever. You know. And um, but I, yep. I was definitely impressed with them. So uh, good value. And they're made by Knitter's Pride. Yeah. And that's certainly a good good needle. Yep. And I um, stocked the swivel cords individually. I didn't buy any of the fixed cords because the swivel ones are the novelty. So I thought, oh, I'll, I'll get those. Um, the cords are interchangeable between all of the Knitter's Pride mm -hmm. sets. So if you have extra fixed cords from your Dreams or your Carbons, you can use them with them mindful. And vice versa, you can use the swivel mindful cords on your uh, dreams or carbons. See, and I bought, I don't even know where they are. I bought these, oh my gosh, I don't remember how many years ago, maybe 15 years ago. It was a set of Dreams Wood Knitter's Pride. This mm -hmm. was like when they first came out. I'm wondering, I have to find them. I haven't used them in years. Uh -huh. um, I want to know, I want to go back and get them out. Yeah. I got to figure out where they are. They always had a... Uh, special set at holiday time you know it would be like a set of needles and one year they had barrettes with or hair things with oh, them oh no and mine was just a one set one year it was a music related one and yeah every year they had something with it i don't yeah. know what well was they had with that yours. beautiful set of carbons now i love carbons yeah that's what i have as interchangeables at home 
Yes, carbons. Yeah, I love the carbons. Uh, they're yeah. they're beautiful. But I don't have I have them only in fixed. I don't have them interchangeable. Mm. And then um, they had that one set that was a Christmas promo. It was carbons black? Oh, was it? Yeah. Okay. That was a promo. Um, gorgeous, gorgeous needles. Um, you know, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. I, I I mean, I came up with these like really fancy like needles many a couple of years ago that had like uh crystals so oh crystals. yeah yeah remember you know i mean what do you buy the knitter who likes jewelry and needles uh -huh. that <laughs> yeah <laughs> but um yeah it you know it's just amazing but uh, no I, I i being a very serious knitter a person who absolutely finds more joy in knitting than probably anything else in life um I, you gotta have the right tool you know just is what it is. Mm -hmm. So, all right. Well, I got to go check these out. Okay. <laughs> and that's all I have for today. Yeah, well, she certainly is opening boxes. Usually every time yeah. I come into the shop, she's grumbling. It took me all day to unpack that box. Apparently, it's a lot of work unpacking yarn. I don't know. We all think it's great. <laughs> well, only when it's brand new stuff, it, it takes a while because you have to enter it all in the computer, have a picture and a description for every item. But can you download the pictures? Yeah. Oh, I don't take all the photographs. I went to their website, to the okay. Scassell Knitting, that's the distributor for this, to their website to get all the pictures. Yes. Okay, so it's it's not... Oh, so okay. I just have to download it from their website, put it on my local drive, and then go to my computer system, mm -hmm. get the description, and yeah. A lot of the descriptions, either I copy it from the manufacturer website or I just take it right off the label. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it just takes a while to put it all in. Right, so, I'm sure. And once it's in the computer and you restock it, then it's, yeah, then it's a big Yeah, then it's a breeze. Yeah. Um, so a couple of other things that we have to talk about. One, yep, we still have a few baskets of yarn left. Um, mm -hmm. You know. For clearance. For yeah. all the clearance yarn. You know, so it's still on the website. It's going to stay there, apparently. Um, but there are some really, really nice yarns in there. The Misty Alpaca is just gorgeous, gorgeous yarn. Couple mm -hmm. thoughts with that Misty Alpaca? Quick cowls in the Christmas basket. Mm -hmm. um, that That is wonderful yarn for that. It's ex incredibly soft. Then there's some um, Baby Crofter, I think. What's that? That's yeah, that. Sirdar Baby Crofter. And that's a little bit heavier. Great baby blanket. Yep, it's throw a some chunky. Baby, it's a chunky. Throw it in your, throw a couple baby blankets in your, um, you know, gift closet, if you will. Um, let's see. Then there's Got a, yarn for this, these hats. Oh, yeah. There's a little Still bit of that left. That now. left. Um, and then there is this Bravo Meza. Chunky. Great for hats. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, another... I, I don't know. I'm into this hat thing because what I'm doing is I am building now... Um, I, 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 first of all, a hat is nothing better than an instant gratification project. But what I'm doing is I'm building this box of hats or fingerless mitts, or uh, you name it. And building this box so that when I have my family over at Christmas, I'm gonna put the box out and say, here you go, folks, have fun. Mm -hmm. And I did that with some of my things that I had knit with my sisters last year. And I only mm -hmm. had I only had stuff like in there for girls, because it was stuff that mm -hmm. it was, that I had knit. You know, a knit along. I mean, I can't say no to a knit along, but I may never ever wear the finished object. Mm -hmm. You know, it just is what it is. I have to knit, so there's going to be things that I knit that I can't wear or use or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so I'm putting it in a box and saving it, and that's what these hats will all be. But um, so yeah. Um, that's what I'm doing, and that's mm -hmm. this clearance yarn has been a boon for that. That's yeah. And so I, I know I bought another skein of this. I'm gonna do a broken rib scarf to match this, I think. Okay. But um, so yeah, great yarn, great deal. Check cool. out the website. Yep. So, and now something I learned from Arnie and Carlos. We have three tasks for you. Mm-hmm. Like. Uh huh. Subscribe. Uh huh. And comment. Right interact <laughs> if you do all three of those like subscribe and comment you will be eligible for a ten dollar gift card for magpie's cottage uh well not everybody we will draw one name yeah from okay each that would episode. be a lot of gift cards i did not pre-draw i i gotta get in that habit i did this last week too so mm. i will put the name right here whoever won please contact me 
at info at magpiescottage.com. I will email you your gift card, and then you can use that in the store or online. We tested out the whole system with our winner from um, that I announced last time. She two times ago is when mm -hmm. she commented. Um, yeah, so I sent it to her. She got the receipt in her email, and then uh, she used it that night and put an order in. Everything worked perfectly. Oh, cool. Thank you, Stephanie, for being our guinea pig. There you go. So, um, yeah, so just comment. I just picked from one of the comments, and uh, yeah. Cool. Well, that's I guess it. that's it for today. That's it. Okay. I have Thank to go you. wind yarn and pay for some tips. Okay. All right. Bye-bye, <laughs> everybody. Bye.